the etymological excellence of Sanskrit language. In recent centuries, it has become a popular notion that Sanskrit is a religious language. The grammatical system of that language is very difficult and its learning process is confined to a particular sect and so it is totally considered as a dead language. But the fact is entirely different. The contribution of Sanskrit in protecting the Indianness is remarkable. The contribution of Sanskrit in the field of philosophy, psychology, literature and almost all the disciplines is irrefutable. Though a classical language, it is something more. It is a perennial river of knowledge catering to a variety of situations in an ideal society. A mere list of literary varieties that forms the Sanskrit literature is sufficient to receive the appreciation of people who have true academic spirit. Coming to the language aspect, one notices that it presents a multi-dimensional linguistic pattern, a perfectly and fully developed grammatical system. The science of etymology is one of the rarest aspects of language. Etymology, also known as Nirukta, is considered as one of the six parts of the Veda. The six parts are Siksha, Vyakarana, Chandas, Nirukta, Jyotisha and Kalpa. Nirukta is like the ear of the Veda Purusha. Etymology is the origin and the sense development of words. It is a rare gift of Sanskrit language. However, according to some Western scholars and Indian scholars of Western mind who criticized it as a traversy of science, waste of the human intellect and so on. Sanskrit has more than 2000 verbs, possibly a rare distinction among all the languages and each verb gives rise to hundreds of verbal derivations. Unlike the other Indo-European languages, Sanskrit has its own significance in respect of etymology. According to the view of Holger Pedersen, the Romans did not know how to derive the stem of the words from a comparison of various inflectional forms and the Greeks in this respect were no wiser. But the Indian grammarians were never capable of laundering in such confusion. They derived the stem correctly from inflectional forms in the roots and the roots from the several groups of related words. They ascertained the laws of derivations and compositions and so forth. In this article, a humble attempt is made there to introduce some selected words along with their etymological meaning which throw light on some socio, scientific, cultural and economic aspects of the then existing society. Yaska, the foremost lexicographer of the world who lived in 8th century BC, gave etymological derivations for all the Vedic words. while Shiraswami, who commentated Amarakosya, a lexicography of classical words too. Let us analyze some words. The word Jagat, which denotes the world is derived as Gachati Iti Jagat. Here, the world is called Jagat as it keeps on moving. This derivation reveals the movability or locomotion and Transiteration of the world. And according to the opinion of modern scientists, the whole universe is revolving or rotating by itself. Our ancient seers of Vedic age might have been aware of this cosmic truth while coining the word Jagat. Similarly, the word Graha, which means planet, can be derived as Granati iti Graha. 
the planet is called graha as it binds the other planets this idea is implicit in the phenomena of gravitation in the same manner the sun is called savita which is derived from the root shun suyate iti savita because he gives life to flora and fauna the word amavasya new moon day is derived as ama sahavasiti chandra or kau which means the sun and the moon are close together they are in the line similarly the coining of the names of months chaitra vaisakha reveals the knowledge of our ancestors about uh, astronomical matters even today aryabhatta's law is considered to be the basis for calculating the timings of solar and lunar eclipses all the above aspects uh, throw light on the astronomical knowledge of our ancestors the word pita that is father is derived from the root pa to protect pati kulam iti pita he is the father who protects the whole family the word duhita means daughter is derived from the root duh to milk in vedic times it was the practice of girls in the family to milk cows hence they were called duhitas the word nanda which means sister in law husband's sister is derived as na nanda iti bhratru jayam who will not let brother's wife peaceful yaska while interpreting the word acharya that is the teacher has given three meanings acharam grahayati one who cultivates mannerism acharati one who practices good manners and achinotardhan one who keeps on collecting material pertaining to knowledge all these three are expected to be cultivated by an ideal teacher the word ante vasi one who sits under a guru shows that the gurukula system of education was prevalent in those days the word grama means village is derived as grasyante bhogvihi which implies exploitation of the have nots by house the word agrahara which means a colony of learned brahmins is also coined on the sense of town planning the etymology of the word is harehe hayam haraha harasya ayam haraha harascha harascha harau agre harau visesha agrahara which means srotriyanam nivasa gramaha yatra ubhayoh parshayoh hariharayo alaye syatam a colony of brahmins with the temples of shiva and vishnu on either side the word hridaya is also coined on a scientific basis the derivation of the word is given in satapada brahmana of yajurveda as kru means harane that receives da means dane that gives ya means prapane that circulates which totally means harati dadati yapaiti iti hridayam the function of the heart is to draw blood from the other parts of the body give blood to lungs and make blood separate to all the parts of the body this derivation also reveals that our ancients were aware of the circulatory system it is not out of place to mention here that in the west the circulatory function of the heart is discovered by william harvey in 1628 ad a british scientist but he could not describe how blood reaches the heart and flows from it in the year 1669 a scientist named marcelo malpighi clearly described how blood flows into heart and comes out of it a few words only are studied in this article other words can be obtained by perusal of etymological dictionaries in conclusion i would like to emphasize 
that sanskrit should be kept alive otherwise there is the possibility of the regional languages languishing let me conclude this article with the quotation from mahatma gandhi sanskrit is like the river ganga for our languages if it dries up the regional languages also would lose their vitality and power jai to sanskritam jai to bharatam